session. Now you're watching the sixth and the final episode of ELT Time from Macmillan Education in 2021. I'm your host today. I'm Super from Macmillan Education, teacher trainer and academic consultant based in Shanghai. So it's getting a little bit cold here in Shanghai. How about you? Let me know in the chat box where you're watching from and how's the weather like in your place. Hello. Toto, how are you? We're good. Greetings from Jakarta. How's everything in Jakarta? Hope everything's going well. And Thailand from Min. Yes. A lot of teachers from Thailand, Bangkok, Cambodia, Vietnam. Nice to see you again. Or maybe first time yeah welcome welcome to the session so in this year throughout this year we have talked about five topics in the elt time like series do you remember any of the topics we have covered before yeah you can type in the chat box and let me know which topics do you remember we have been talking about throughout the year We have talked about we have talked about global skills assessment engaging large classes yes that's teaching skills right engaging large classes and we have also talked about assessment digital teaching skills yeah how to teach online how to be engaging while teaching online and also we have talked about inclusivity which means how to uh, cater to the different needs of uh, mixed ability students how to differentiate your teaching your materials and your maybe assessment to different kinds of students in your classroom yes we have covered five areas of english language teaching and today is the sixth episode and as you can see from my red scarf this is a year end special and today we're going to focus on a topic which will bring some festive vibes to us which is well-being and this is a very special year and we're also going to reflect on the 2021 or the elt episodes uh, together we're going to talk about something maybe uh, the topics the challenges you are you would like to hear more in 2022 as well okay Without further ado, maybe let me invite the two speakers to the stage. Say hi to the audience, John and Dell. Welcome to the stage. I'm here. Hello, Hello everybody. Wow, you're very festive, Dell. Very festive today. Yes. I hope you like my, uh, um, my get up. My Christmas glasses, huh? Nice. Wow. You've got, You've got very lights on your hat. I just, I just I just found a button and it and it kind of turns the lights on. This is brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow. Maybe, oh, maybe oh. It'll, it'll have you uh, like your brain brain uh, synapses <laughs> firing or something like that. Super, is that is that Dell? Is that Elton? It looks like Elton Elton John. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I agree. Yeah, I like your glasses and uh, and your hat. It looks nice. Yeah, it adds a lot of like uh, end end of year vibes to the session. Thank you for having them. Uh, yeah, just to know, it's rather hot in this uh, meeting room, so uh, this hat may have to come off at some point. Yeah, especially if you make if, if it starts, uh, you start sweating, and then your makeup starts running. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> right. So what's on? What's on today, Super? What have you got for us? So we're going to talk about well, well-being. So we're going to try to offer some festive tips for teachers to take wow. care of their well-being at the end of this year and also looking forward to the next year. And also offer some professional development like uh, uh, strategies for teachers to develop themselves as a like English teacher or head of English teachers. Yeah, so hopefully we're going to 
together we're going to brought a lot uh, bring a lot of like uh, energy to teachers okay so are you ready to start yep not, not you, really to... no, I, I just can't take it seriously when i when i'm looking at dell i just i'm not sure i'm going to myself from giggling no no keep it on keep it on <laughs> 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 so, in this year, we have actually uh, like uh, covered five topics in ELT time, and we have got a lot of uh, feedback from teachers. We received like more than 800 questions from teachers about all the topics, and more than 200 teachers have participated. Uh, 2,000, sorry, 2,000 teachers have participated Ooh. in the ELT time series. So, firstly, we're going to, yeah maybe reflect on the 2021 and think about the most popular topics uh what teachers are talking about and what they are interested in and what we can yeah work on more in the coming 2022 to help teachers to yeah develop themselves uh maybe john would you like to start with some of the popular topics and challenges for teachers in 2021 yeah, definitely. Yeah. Again, another another challenging year, um, but also lots of positives as well. And we've learned loads of skills, haven't we, this year? Uh, skills that we wouldn't necessarily have learned, um, you know, without uh, the situation uh, as, as it is. Um, yeah, things like uh, online online teaching still probably num number one. I think Dell will talk a little bit about that uh, in, a, in, in a minute. And obviously things like uh, social emotional uh, learning and help for teachers, students, well-being, uh, all, the, all these issues are, you know, very, very, uh, you know, current um, at the top of our uh, list. And now some countries, I'm thinking like Vietnam is kind of, it was face to face and then I went back online and a lot of places now are coming back out of uh, online and going back to face to face. So that's going to be a very interesting um, transition back to the classroom. And that'd be quite a strange feeling, won't it, for teachers mm. and students uh, as well. What, what about what about you, Dell? What's um, what's top of your list? Well, I've got some uh, some data that I'll share with you. Um, this is from uh, teachers across uh, Southeast Asia. So in the countries that I work, so uh, predominantly. Uh, Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, Indonesia. Yeah. Um, just share my. Can you see my screen? Okay. Loading up now. Let, let's see if your if let's see if it matches. Uh, Chor Chortip Chortip uh, Virea says most challenging is teaching online. Um, yeah. Doing well, let, let's see if it matches. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll have a look at that. So you can see the four countries that I've been uh, working in and looking at work well working in virtually of course so i had a, about a thousand teachers responded to my uh, my survey um and this was the uh, these were the areas so the first question we asked them what challenges do you have when teaching um and uh, the the biggest challenge and quite interestingly this is a the, one of the areas that we get lots of requests for training is engagement mm -hmm. um and then at the uh, at the bottom, actually, I can't see what the blue one says, but I'm pretty sure it says uh, technology, internet. right? Yeah, internet, 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 internet issues. Internet yeah. issues. So, so with internet issues, that was all to do mainly with the connection, with not having Wi-Fi, not having the internet, not being able to actually physically do it. It's a big chunk, isn't it, of of the pie that um, that is taken up with that, with actually not having the infrastructure to to teach online. And then we have the teaching skills, the online teaching and interaction. And these are quite similar, I think. Teachers are having issues with getting students to communicate yeah. in, the, in an online class and being able to communicate with them, that lack of face-to-face -face teaching that, that, um, that is so useful for monitoring, uh, for just uh, being able to observe what students are doing and be able to do group work and, and pair work without breakout rooms and this kind of thing. But if I go back to engagement, I, I chose some of the, this was all qualitative data. So it was people giving me uh, real, real information. And I took out all the key words and I came up with this word cloud. Mm. And it was quite interesting that student is there in the middle because it's actually, the question was about challenges you have when teaching. So a lot of teachers, I think, were looking at the challenges that students had with their own teaching as well. But again, we can see in their engagement, is massive focus, participation, attention. So all these, yeah. all these lovely words pulled out really give me something to go on yeah. for next year when we're doing training, just to make sure 
teachers are, are, are addressing these areas as well. Yeah, yeah. I think that's important because the student, I think even more with online teaching, you know, the student becomes even more important. That And that relationship, trying to find that human relationship, isn't it? When you're, when you're teaching online and um, yeah, it, it's, it yeah. is tricky. Yeah. And uh, I think we're going to have a look at maybe some strategies for PD, yeah. professional development yeah. in general, aren't we? Uh, we can maybe chat about solutions a little bit more. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. So, yeah. Despite all the like challenges and difficulties teachers facing in 2021, it is still a good year. Yeah, another good year for teachers to develop themselves, to mm. gain new skills. Yeah, to develop like different teaching strategies to cope up with these challenges. And maybe uh, while uh, John and Dale are talking about some like strategies for uh, professional development, uh, teachers can share in the chat box about how you developed yourself in 2021 and what mm -hmm. skills you have yeah, gained this year. So let's yeah. move on to the next uh, item, which is strategies for ongoing professional development in 2022. Both John and Dale are very experienced uh, teachers and uh, teacher trainers. So would you like to share some of your uh, strategies for teachers to keep developing themselves in 2022? So maybe starting from Mr. John. Yeah, um, I actually, to be honest, I think Dale's way better than me, way more disciplined than me in terms of his uh, professional development. So it'd be good to hear from him in a minute about he how he manages to, to, to achieve that. So. I think the first thing is to uh, make sure that you uh, provide space and time, I think, for, for that, that PD. Build it into your, you know, your weekly, monthly, daily routines, uh, whether it's, you know, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour. You know, build it into your daily uh, schedule. Make it a routine um, and, and try to change that um, would be sort of one, uh, one, one tip. Um, and the other one... I've got so many I want to share. And yeah, I think the other one would be, I wonder if it's the same as Dale, would be to, once you learn something or you're learning something, try and, if you can create a community around it. So maybe one or two other people or people you can share it with or, or teach somebody else, maybe, for example, whether it's teaching related or something very different. Um, yeah, try and try and talk about it, create a community online, uh, create some time to, to actually chat about it and, and pass on ideas and, and your knowledge. And that will ho hopefully help you apply it as well to your immediate uh, profession or, 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 or life. What, what, what about you, Del? Yeah, I had that down as well. I mean, I think the best way to learn something is to, is, is to have that goal of, be, of, of being forced in some ways uh, to teach it to somebody else. So something that we've done internally, uh, similar to the ELT times that you guys have attended, um, is have um, sessions with our with with our own members of staff, and we've we've gone away and uh, and learned stuff and researched stuff, and then presented that to our team, uh, and that's been a really that's been really helpful and beneficial. So that would be my suggestion, and 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 also one of the things. Um, there's loads of free online courses out there to help you develop loads of free MOOCs, whether it be Open Learn or um, Future Learn, Coursera. There's tons of stuff out there. But the, the, the problem is that a lot of people start and then they drop out. They don't have that discipline to, to continue to the yeah. end. I think there's a I can't remember what the statistic is. It could be around, I think, around 75 percent of people who start a MOOC um, don't don't get to the end of it. So you've got to be really disciplined. So, and I think that is like what you said, John, making a time to do that. I think also when you look at these MOOCs, they're so interesting. There's lots of courses there. I'll give you an example. This year I've done loads of online development um, on MOOCs. I've done loads of courses. But I've also done things that are not directly related to teaching English. I, I've done a, I did a MOOC on uh, Dutch art, for example. Um, and it was it was wonderful. But within that... It kind of gave me that desire to finish, which gave me a sense of achievement. And then when I came to do another course, I wanted to finish as well. But also um, within that, I even found some ideas and some tips and that I can apply to my own profession as well. So my advice is do professional development related to teaching, but don't just uh, limit yourself. Do other things as well and, and get that love for learning. 
Yeah, and just just yeah on that one as well. And I know Dell, you you set up for our team, even though we we're in different offices around Asia. You set up like a, a book club, so every month we would get that in the diary. We would read or research, you know, a very short article. Or I'm thinking for teachers, you, you could send around a video of a teacher teaching online, right? And then you'd yeah. ask a few questions, and every month uh, you'd get together and chat about that 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 video and what what you how you felt about it, what you would do differently as a way of kind of building and sharing and building a community to try and get a, a human connection between your colleagues uh, as well. Yeah, I completely agree. It's really great. It's always good to share. Yes, and I benefited a lot from our book club, as John mentioned. Yeah, create a community to include like a, a other people to learn together will motivate and support each other. Yeah, that's a great strategy. And using a lot of resources online is definitely a good choice for professional development in this like a uh, era. And yes. now let's move on. Yeah, I see teachers have mentioned about they developed their themselves in using different kinds of platforms, such as like Quizlet, Kahoot. Yeah, these are the ones we have suggested in the early sessions. Yeah, glad that a lot of teachers started to use more tools to engage them, their students in the online classroom. And now we are moving on to item three. We're going to offer some top tips for how educators can improve their well-being. Because we know uh, teachers can be quite stressful, yeah, facing a lot of diff uncertainties, a lot of challenges. So as an educator ourselves, as an teach as a teacher, uh, would you like to suggest some strategies and tips for teachers to keep their well-being as a teacher before they go to the classroom and start teaching? Yeah, maybe this time let's start from Dell, the Asia Wellness King. Uh, <laughs> education. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think um, everybody's been learning quite quickly, haven't they? About how important. Um, I, I would say it's one of the words of the year, isn't it? Wellness or well-being. It's certainly. Uh, we didn't really talk about it too much when when we were face to face, and I think it's it's come to the forefront and rightly so. Um, for me, well, one of the biggest things is uh, is is trying to limit the screen time. I think that was mentioned in the chat. Somebody mentioned it in the chat earlier. But for me, that's a, a key factor. Um, when, when we're teaching online, we're, we're looking at the, at the screen, obviously. And then as soon as we get off, we might pick up our phones and start looking at something in social media or something. And it's very challenging to not do that. But if you can, put, if you can maybe have a time in the evenings, particularly uh, where you switch your phone off earlier before you go to bed and have, have a time just to read or set some goals about how about reading. I don't know any teachers that don't like reading. Um, so I, I joined uh, Goodreads and they have a challenge on Goodreads where you can set a number of books that you read per year and then try and achieve that. And that's really kept me motivated in terms of reading, but certainly switch your phone off. And then hopefully from that, you become uh, um, better at sleeping as well. I think uh, if you if you take some responsibility for your for your sleep um, there are lots of resources out there to help you get better sleep this is going to make you feel better obviously through the day feel more re refreshed and energized during the day so the two kind of have a knock-on effect get rid of the screen as much as possible get more sleep um, and, and wake up ready to go yeah that sounds good that sounds good and you're a good sleeper Dell, aren't you yeah, yeah, I can do it with my eyes closed, John. <laughs> That's John's joke, by the way. That's <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, just picking up on that as well. Yeah, sort of to help us, you know, uh, teachers out there and or whoever really with our own well-being. And I know, yeah, Ch uh, Chortip, yeah, Virea has been talking about uh, jogging in the morning as a as a as a routine, and I think the importance of getting a good maybe routine in the morning going before before your classes start to help you kind of clear your mind, get you set up, ready ready for the day. That might include some kind of exercise, some kind of very silent or quiet time. Just, you know, don't look at your, your phone or turn on the TV or anything. Just have some time just with yourself to clear to clear your mind before, before the day. As I mentioned, exercise, very good. Um, 
if you can read a little bit, maybe reflect a little bit on yesterday's teaching and what, what you want to achieve today and today's teaching. I think that will really, really help sort of set you set you up for the day and check out. There's an acronym called Life uh, Savers, Life Savers. I put that in the chat box and Savers is an acronym for things that you can build into your uh, into your morning routine. So S is for silence. Uh, v is for visualization, exercise, reading and scribing, uh, I think. So, yeah, have a have a have a. Have a look at that one as well, and uh, hopefully there'll be something useful for you there. Yeah, there's um, I, I I've done some research on on wellness, as you know. I think we all have. We've been part of a, our our wellness week uh, at Macmillan Education, um, and you you mentioned routine. Routine is like it's it's in everything uh, went to do with wellness. You need it. You need to create that routine. If you can get a good routine together, you'll be on the right track. Another thing is reflection as well. I think, um, you know, look, looking at what, what you've done that day or that week and, uh, and reflecting on it and seeing if there's patterns and there's ways to do this. A couple of our colleagues, actually Daisy, um, who's the, 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 the other member of our team today who's helping us out behind the scenes. Thanks, Daisy. Um, has a journal that she keeps um, about about the day, not not a diary of what's gone through the day, but maybe about how she's been feeling that day. And another colleague of ours um, does the same thing, writes writes down their emotions uh, throughout the day and uh, and reflects on them. And if they if they keep reoccurring, then tries to find the patterns and what's a co what's causing those good or those bad emotions. So I think that's a really nice way to do it as well. Start some kind of journal. Good idea. Good idea. Yeah. Very nice. Um, did I have something? Um, Go on. Go on, Super. Yeah, we, we have a teacher mention about when you have problems, you can talk to your colleagues to share ideas. I think it is a very good point because uh, sometimes we feel like uh, uh, distanced. We feel like less connected with teachers when we are working from home or teaching online. So at this time, it's, it's really important to stay connected with your community, with your group, with your team, yeah, to keep that communication going on, to keep each other like in a, in a uh, team, yeah, to be physically and men mentally in, in that team, to feel that support and energy is really, really important. Yeah, yeah. and using a lot was, of um, yeah, tips. So, sorry, so, sorry to interrupt you. I'm just going to say, no, I was reading an article this morning uh, about who do you talk to when you have problems, you know, in terms of your own well-being. And if only a very small percentage, this was teachers, I think, in the US it was, and only a very small percentage said they would talk to their colleagues at, at work, other, other teachers or their line managers uh, in, in their school. Uh, only a few of them said that they actually would go to these people. Most people go to their friends and family first, which, which is kind of sad in a way, because uh, um, as someone mentioned here, it's important to have a yeah, an open culture, I think and can be able to talk openly, I think, with your peers, uh, your line managers uh, as uh, as well. So I think that's su super important. I'd like yeah, to work important. at um, I'd like to work at Nari Chell's school. Um, Nari Chell sends uh, sends baked goods to her colleagues who live nearby. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, I know. It's pretty awesome. All right. Sounds great. <laughs> yeah, it's going to cheer me up. Okay, so thank you for the good tips for teachers to stay like healthy, stay, uh, keep their wellness uh, in 2022. So maybe let's move on to the students. It's not easy to be an, a student in this time. So a lot of like uh, issues, a lot of problems might occur uh, for student uh, in the students group. So probably we can talk about some uh, things to help learners with their well-being in 2022 as well. Yeah, do you have any yeah top tips to share? Starting maybe from Dell this time. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think they're similar, aren't they? In ways um, to to helping yourself. Um, if you can pass on those messages to your learners, I, I think incorporating it into your lesson plan wouldn't be a bad thing. So normally we do warmers at the start of the class or, or fillers at the end or closers. So having um, having something that's related to wellness, whether it's a, an activity to calm, calm us down, some breathing techniques uh, could be useful. And just, again, 
bringing it to the forefront and letting students know that it's important for them to take uh, responsibility of it. Now, obviously, depending on the age of the students, uh, there's, there's certain things that you can do. Um, but but I'm thinking if, if I was teaching primary students, you would still be able to do some breathing techniques or something. Have a look at your interaction patterns as well. When you're planning a lesson, look at your lesson plan and see how much time the children are actually watching you or looking at you on the screen, as opposed to doing something that could be done by themselves with the, with the cameras turned off, with the screen turned off, and then putting it back on again. So get balance in your lesson so they're not always just sitting down, sedentary, looking at the screen. Give them something to do as well. So that, that would be my advice. John? Yeah, good. Yeah, no, 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 nice, uh, nice tips. Um, yeah, I'm thinking along the same lines. And I think a lot of these days, a lot of uh, course books or materials for learning English will have this uh, SEL content, right? The socio emotional learning content mm -hmm. integrated into the course, again, which can be super useful to bring up uh, yeah, but these kind of kind of issues that students uh, may have, and it's a good opportunity to uh, have discussions on uh, you know types of sort of well-being uh, or socio-emotional learning type uh, issues, things about you know how how well they know themselves, who do you talk to when you have issues, and things like that. Um, yeah, it's super super useful to have that kind of uh, uh, content, and yeah, creating an open, as we said, like an open culture of talking about issues uh, is, a, is, a, is a good way. I think self-disclosure, so from, from a teacher actually sort of sharing about yourself as well and your challenges as well will sort of help them uh, get to know you a little bit better and, you know, help under, understand that, you know, every, everyone has issues and sometimes issues are out of our control, right? Uh, we can only do, uh, you know, control the things that we can control really. So, yeah, so sharing a lot about you will also sort of help, I think, build that kind of community uh, within inside the class. And I think my final point would be just notice, you know, like in a classroom, body language, try try and observe the students if they turn on their cameras, uh, their kind of body language, you know, how they're looking, uh, et cetera. And you might be able to sort of tell, tell a lot by that and you know, if you know some are not responding so well or not looking so great, maybe can can follow up on a on an individual uh, uh, on an individual base, basis. Um, but it's difficult to find the time, isn't it, for individual? You know, it would, it would be great to say, ah, oh, you could stay on after class for twenty minutes, and anybody wanted to drop in uh, online to a virtual room to have a chat, they could do. But you know, teachers are busy and they have to go to the next class and things like that. So. It's often it's quite it's quite tricky, isn't it, to find that individual contact time to deal with yeah. you know potential issues if you if you see them. Yeah, I think that's why you that's why it's a good idea to to make it part of the actual lesson that you're teaching. So, in call it, you know, this is our well. We're going to do it. We're going to start the lesson with our wellness warmer. Now, uh, Chantip said you can't. Sometimes you can't observe their feelings and emotions because they haven't got a camera on. But you, you can still do these activities and hope that they're, they're taking part and participating in those activities. And by, by just making them aware of it, um, of the need to do it, hopefully, um, you know, this will stay with them. Yeah. Yes, I think like integrating social and emotional learning strategies and activities into the lesson plan. Yeah, doing the uh, teaching with the social and emotional learning skills as objectives could sometimes help a little bit with students like uh, uh, like wellness. Yeah, to support them like uh, men they support them mentally. Yeah, to give them more uh, energy from the teacher's perspectives. And yeah. I know there are a lot of like a uh, uh, teacher, a uh, student like wellness uh, webinars and articles mm -hmm. from Macmillan Education that we can share later mm -hmm. in the chat box. Yeah, teachers can go and watch some other webinars uh, of uh, from like a very uh, experts like teachers who can support you in other yeah aspects. And lastly, I have got yeah, Del, would you like to add something? I was just going to say, Daisy put something in the chat earlier, the Action for Happiness uh, website, which is a calendar 
Um, and I think this is a really neat idea that you could use with your students as well. Mm -hmm. You could go through the calendar with the students. It, the Action for Happiness calendar, you might need to adapt it for your level of learner um, and the kind of tasks, but I think it's a really cool idea. And you can also give maybe choose one for homework um, that students do one every week or every month, and they have to maybe uh, reflect or write about what they did, and uh, they're, they're really neat. There it is. Thanks, yes. Daisy. And lastly, I've got a very nice question from teacher Tui from Little School in Ho Chi Minh City of Vietnam. Uh, Tui asked about, as a head of English, what am I able to do to support my teammate overcome the difficulties of COVID-19 situation in general and be well prepared for the unpredictable risks? Yeah, would you like to have some suggestions for teacher Tui in Vietnam? Uh, for, for Twee, yeah, thanks Twee for the question. I'm not sure if she's here today. Let us know, Twee, if you're uh, in, in the room. But yeah, I think, um, you know, managers, line managers, directors of studies, academic heads of school, yeah, often their job this year is, you know, well, it's usually to manage teachers and maybe, yeah, maybe they're used to uh, managing, um, you know, individual uh, challenges as well. But I think this year has been, you know, a lot more challenges uh, for them as well. So I think like we were talking about with the well-being for uh, for educators, if they can create that op open culture, that, you know, sort of sharing issues and, and problem is, you know, is, is, a, is a positive thing, uh, would be good. Maybe setting up some peer coaching, uh, mentoring uh, type programs as well uh, between, between teachers, uh, for example, and just sort of generally building a community, maybe through uh lesson lesson film clubs as i mentioned where they might show a, an online video of someone teaching a class uh you know once a month and then teachers you know go and watch that and then have a then have a chat a discussion about it and what they liked about it what ideas they would use and it helps to build that kind of community doesn't it a, a little bit as uh, as uh, as well um what about you Dell? Yeah, I, I think I'd agree pretty much with everything that you've said there. A, a problem shared is a problem halved and all that kind of thing. So, But as teachers, um, we need to look at our students and recognize signs of where they might be having challenges. And as uh, managers, we need to look at our teachers and do exactly the same thing. And when we recognize that there are challenges to, you know, to, to ask people how they are, ask, ask your teachers, if you're managing teachers, you know, ask them, how are you feeling and listen to what they're saying. You know, not just the how are you, actually, how are you? How are you coping? What are you doing to look after yourself? What are you doing for your own wellness? Find it, get the answers, have a conversation about it with the, with the people around you um, and then act on it and then try and help and, and do something to support them. Um, yeah. That would be my advice, you know, just uh, just yeah. have empathy because it's a real challenge. It's a, it's a challenge for everybody and understand that and and. I know sometimes it's difficult if you are managing timetables and things like that. We have to be practical. But at the same time, you don't want to be giving teachers eight hours of online teaching a day with 15 minute gaps between each lesson. And so if you can look at things like that as well, that yeah. would be really helpful, I'm sure. Yeah, I, th I think you touched on it there. It's just I think for a director of studies or, or a head of department is you know, firstly showing appreciation. Right. It's a tough job showing teachers that they're important. Uh, and respected with inside your school is is the is the first the starting point I think and then I think for any manager out there yeah do some courses on on empathy do some courses on being a good listener for example yeah. and, that, and that will really 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 help you I think yeah active listening skills yeah like you say you're not just saying hey, all right how are you and then they go fine thanks you're actually yeah. no how are you what are you? and like I said tell me what you're doing to make yourself feel better you know what i mean so we can yeah. have a conversation about it yeah yes and i did a session this year course about how to give feedback i think this is a really good like skill as well for teacher head yeah sometimes your teachers need your support and feedback so how to deliver that uh constructional feedback to your teachers in a nice way is also a good uh like a way to help them and support them 
Okay, so I think we're we're almost yeah finishing. But before we end this、uh, end of year session, would you like to say a few words about our journey in ELT time this year? Did you enjoy it? How do you feel about the the whole like series? And, and, and likewise, if you've got any other questions or challenges, do do put them in the chat box now, and then in our new season in 2022, we can we can deal we can deal with those、uh, with those issues. Yeah. Sorry, was that question for us or for the teachers? For for you two, yeah, and、okay. the teachers, your feedback is always welcome. So please、yeah. share some of your feelings about ELT time as well in the chat chat box for、yeah. reference. In 2022,、yeah. I, I I think、um, for me, just reflecting on ELT times in 2021, it's been great. It's been really nice to、uh, connect with the teachers across the region.、Um, nice to get people's ideas,、um, and again, like professional development, it's forced me to go away and learn things, and then hopefully present them to you in an easy to manage way.、Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to 2022. I'm positive, and、uh, yeah, can't wait. Absolutely,、yes. yeah. Keep keep learning. Remember the positives, right? Remember what you've learned, and if you if you don't remember, then think about it. Write it down. All the, all the great things that you've learned,、uh, what to do this year, and how you've got out of your comfort zone, for example. All the all the great things that you've learned,、uh, and when you look at that, I'm sure you will see a, or you'll be quite satisfied of your uh, uh, achievement, uh, hopefully. So. Yeah, keep on learning, and、uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you again、uh, in 2022. Wow, this year has gone so fast. Yeah, very, very fast. And when looking back, we always yeah remember the good good parts, right? Although it's been quite challenging, a lot of difficulties, a lot of uncertainties, but still, yeah, try to focus on the fulfilling moments. The happy, like things happen, small little things, yeah, in your daily life that keep you in a good mood. Okay, so thank you very much for coming today. He's been Del. He's been John. She's been super. Thanks for stopping by, Asia. Stay classy, Asia. Have a super twenty twenty two and early happy New Year for everyone.、Happy、New Year. Happy New Year, everybody! Happy New Year, New Year in twenty twenty two. See you. Bye. Bye.